Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video and so I hope that you're all doing great today and so in this update video we will be taking a look at what is currently going on out there. So there is a disturbance that is noted in uh, the Gulf of Mexico right now that we're going to be talking about and we'll also be taking a look at what is expected for the long term and so before I go into details. Okay, so we are starting off with a view of the North Atlantic right now. And so we're seeing that we have quite a bit of shower and thunderstorm activity that is noted in diverse places. Uh, but over in the Gulf of Mexico, where we have that, uh, all that moisture, that is where that disturbance is located. And so it is designated as Invest 99L. And so going to the National Hurricane Center's five day outlook, here we have it. Uh, and we see that it is marked in orange. And orange means that there is a medium chance for this to develop into a tropical cyclone and so we're seeing here that there is a 40 percent chance for us to see development but the system really has very limited time because it is going to be accelerating inland maybe by tomorrow and uh, it just has today to get in shape but we could see this become something but not something i wouldn't say a tropical cyclone but more than likely just a rainmaker for sections of northeastern mexico and possibly southern texas as well and recon is going to be in investigating this system if it is necessary and so let us go ahead now and take a look at the dry air map and so we're seeing that we just have this plethora of dry air that is noted out in the Atlantic uh, especially where you see those oranges and those red shades that is when we have a lot of dry air present and so this has been the dominant inhibitant factor for tropical cyclone development throughout this hurricane season once we have a break in all this dry air though where we have an opportunity for waves to develop uh, and the shear is also conducive then we could see tropical cyclones and so uh, we haven't had one thus far uh, during the month of August and on average we would have about three storms uh, by the end of the month so thus far there isn't a tropical cyclone that has developed in August and so let us go ahead now and take a look at what the various model runs are expecting so we're starting off with GFS and so this map here is showing the precipitation as well as uh, those black lines called isobars and those isobars are lines of equal pressure and when you see them in a closed circular manner with the pressure being at least 10 13 millibars or lower then we could possibly be looking at a tropical cyclone and so this is by Friday the 26th of August and we're seeing that we have what appears to be a tropical wave maybe trying to develop to the east of the Lesser Antilles so, so there is a pressure of 10 13 millibars uh, in the vicinity of that system but the model is not expecting that it is going to become anything significant however uh going to september on the second here we're seeing that gfs is expecting that a wave that is going to be emerging off africa will be developing and this is not uh something that is uncommon or surprising actually this is what is expected or anticipated at this time of year but we're seeing something completely different from what was uh, being shown earlier this week were multiple systems that the GFS model was expecting to develop but as I said nothing is guaranteed and we're seeing that change right now and even what is being shown now is not guaranteed either uh, but it is likely that we will see an increase in tropical cyclone activity as we head into next month. And so moving on to Euro, we are seeing that by Friday the 26th, the model is expecting that uh, we would have a wave emerging off Africa and possibly developing and then going all the way to the 29th of August. Uh, here we're seeing a 1,005 millibar low pressure system. And so that is possibly a tropical storm developing within that region. And uh, the track of it is going to be dependent on that high pressure system. A weaker high pressure system uh, will allow for the system to move on, on a more northwestward like track. Meanwhile, a stronger high pressure system would allow it to move on a more uh, westward track and so we'll have to wait and see for that but something is that uh, the two main models here are expecting that we will have development go into the latter part of this month so going to the climate prediction centers map now so focusing on the right side of your screen 
So looking at week two, uh, where we have from August 24th to the 30th, we're seeing that out in the main development region, we have that red and white striped area. And that is highlighting the development of a tropical cyclone that is possible. And we also see that green and white striped area, which is showing increased rainfall. So uh, it is likely that as we head to the end of August, we will have uh, more and more waves making their way off Africa, increased shower and thunderstorm activity. And so uh, once we have a reduction in all the dry air that is out there, then we could certainly have a development of tropical cyclones. So this is something to watch as we're going to be heading into the final week of the month. But as of now, there is no other marked disturbance on the National Hurricane Center's uh, five-day outlook. And so another factor that really helps with tropical cyclone activity, as a matter of fact, it is the main uh, factor is the sea surface temperatures. And so ocean temperatures are very, very warm right now across the Gulf of Mexico, off the East Coast, and also off the coast of Africa headed west. Westward. And so once we have maybe a tropical disturbance that is located within any of these areas, especially in the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico, uh, and they have favorable conditions, then we could certainly see some development and even rapid intensification once they have enough time. And so uh, going back to that first disturbance, Invest 99L, we're seeing that uh, in the Gulf of Mexico, we have very warm ocean waters, 31, 30 degrees Celsius thereabout. And so the only thing that would allow this to not develop is uh, the time that it has over the warm ocean waters. So even though things might be favorable enough to allow some development, it does not have enough time uh, over warm ocean waters to really get in shape. But let's see what's going to be happening as we head into uh, tomorrow morning with this. If we're going to be seeing it rapidly developing into something. But not only this disturbance, but once we have any disturbance that is in the uh, optimum conditions that will enable tropical cyclone development and intensification, uh, then we could definitely see uh, major systems out there. Because in the past, we've seen where tropical cyclones only need about 24 hours to go from maybe a tropical storm to even being a major hurricane. So we've seen that a lot in the past. And so, uh, it could certainly happen again this year, especially as we head to the peak of the season when conditions are expected to be at their most favorable across the North Atlantic Basin. And so guys, that is really it for this update video. So again, uh, tropical cyclone activity is likely to resume as we're going to be heading into the late part of August, headed to September. And we have that disturbance in Vest 99L with a 40% chance to possibly develop, uh, but it really has limited time. So let us wait and see if it is going to be taking advantage of that small window of opportunity it has to develop but it will be a rainmaker for portions of mexico and maybe southern texas and so if you found this video to be quite informative please give a thumbs up and you can share your thoughts in the comments or ask a question i'll try to respond as best and as soon as i can and of course always remember to be weather wise and i will be keeping you updated as time goes by